Welcome to Electron Line. The concept that we should be really familiar with is the shift in the x domain, in the not x domain, but in the s domain, the complex domain of the Laplace transform. What we mean by that is as follows. Let's go back to the original definition of the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform of a function can be written as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times the function and then we get the transfer function f of s where of course s is the complex number equal to sigma plus omega times j now what happens when there's a shift in the transfer domain in the complex domain or in the s domain for example what if something is written as s minus a well, what can we do with that? Well, we have a way of transferring that back into the time domain. And the way we can do that is as follows. So let's go back over here to our main definition. And let's say that the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to f of s. Now, what if we have a shift there and we write as s minus a, and we write that over here. And now we want to know how to transfer that back into the time domain. Well, notice here, that instead of s, we're going to write as s minus a, because that's the equivalent here. Just like we have it over here, the s here is the s over here. If we write as s minus a, we must write as s minus a inside integral sign. So instead of writing it like this, we have it as e to the minus s minus a times t times a function of dt. So this is still correct. We simply have that in the reverse order. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to factor out an e to the minus st, so minus s times t, which leaves us a minus times a minus a t, and we plus that over there. So now notice we have the integral of e to the minus st times e to the a t times a function of t. Now we put this in parentheses because in essence this is simply still a function of t. So if we call this the function of t, then if we take the inverse Laplace transform, we get f of s minus a is equal to the Laplace transform of this, which means that if we have a shift in the s domain, it shows up as an extra term e to the a t in the time domain. So whenever we take the inverse Laplace transform of a function in the s domain, then notice if there's a shift like this, s minus a, this can be accounted for in the time domain by the term e to the at. To make that a little bit more clear, let's go to our tables here. Remember that if our function was t to the n, the Laplace transform of the function in the frequency domain is n factorial divided by s to the n plus 1. But if we multiply the function of the time domain times e to the at, what does that do when we take the Laplace transform? It simply take s and replaces it with s minus a. Notice if this is positive, we subtract it, which means that if this s e to the minus a t, this would become s plus a, by the way. So it's always the reverse in the sign. Same with the cosine. If we take the cosine of omega t, which we know the Laplace transform is s divided by s squared plus omega squared, then if we multiply the function in the time domain times e to the a t, that simply causes a shift in the s domain by a minus a. So if it's e to the a t, instead of writing s squared, we write quantity s minus a squared, and of course the s in the numerator becomes s minus a. Same for the sine. If we have the sine of omega t, the Laplace transform is omega divided by s squared plus omega squared, but if we now multiply the function in the time domain times e to the a t, that causes a shift in the complex domain, in the s domain, and notice that every s over here, simply be replaced by s minus a. Now remember, if this was e to the minus a t, then this would become s plus a. So it's always reversed in the sign. This is enormously useful, because if we have something like this in the s domain, and we want to find the inverse transform, then all we have to do is say, well, for a moment, if that minus a wasn't there, that clearly looks like a sign when we convert it back, but the s minus a means that we simply have to add the e to the a t term when we do the inverse Laplace transform. So that's why we want to make sure that we see that very clearly, that we understand that, because every time we take the inverse Laplace transform of a function, and there's an s minus a or an s plus the a, 
all we have to do is add that additional term in the time domain. If it's a minus a, we write e to the a t. If it's a plus a, we write e to the minus a t multiplied times the function that we would get if that plus or minus a was not there. And so remember that. Make sure that you see that because we're going to use that a lot in our future videos. And that's how it's done.